Hey everyone, welcome back to Light Inside Cinema. You know, in the previous DaVinci Resolve tutorial video, I received a comment asking me why I don't use adjustment clips when it comes to color grading. And we're gonna cover that and more today. Let's buckle up and let's dive straight into DaVinci Resolve. Adjustment clips, what are they? Well, if you guys are familiar with NLEs like Premiere Pro or Final Cut, they have these things called adjustment layers. DaVinci Resolve calls it the adjustment clip. Adjustment clips are essentially an empty video track where you can put anything you could think of, like fusion compositions, you can do color grading. And what it does is that everything that's underneath that adjustment clip, those effects that are on that adjustment clip will be applied, which is absolutely incredible. But here's one downfall with the adjustment clip, and I want you guys to keep this in your head when you're using these things, okay? Let's say that you shot your footage on 6K resolution. Well, whatever your timeline resolution is, that's what your adjustment clip will be set to. So if you're working with 6K footage on a 4K timeline, your adjustment clip will be just that. And, you know, it may not be something that's noticeable to you guys, but it will reduce the quality of your footage using the adjustment clip just by a hair. Honestly, I don't notice it. It's up to you guys. All I want to do is try to figure out ways to save time when it comes to editing, because if you guys are a professional editor or if you're new to editing, I want you guys to know that time is money and, you know, saving time is crucial when it comes to editing and when you can find ways to do this and speed up your workflow, why not? That's what an adjustment clip is. How do we find it in DaVinci Resolve? Well, we go in here to your effects and we'll click on effects. And you'll see this right here, adjustment clip. We can just drag it straight on to our timeline. Now, as you notice, nothing is happening, right? Because this is what an empty track. It is basically a powerhouse to your creativity. Whatever you want, you can do with this adjustment clip. Let's say that you want to do a punch-in. To do a punch-in, we can simply come in here, click on our adjustment clip, go into our zoom, and we could just do a slight punch-in. Or we can even go a little bit further. All right, here is a little hidden trick that I want to show you guys to keep the eye line together. So when you do your punch-ins, it's not as jarring. So what we're going to do is that we're going to click on our adjustment clip. We're going to click on option and we're just going to duplicate this. Okay, uh, bear with me while we do this. I'm going to go ahead and reset the whole thing. So now I'm coming in here and you're going to see the punch-in, right? but obviously it's a little jarring because the eye line is not the same. In order to fix this, we're gonna click on open effects. We're gonna type in grid, G-R-I-D. Now this looks a little crazy, but I want you guys to think about this like you're working with your camera and you're using, what, the tic-tac-toe board is what I like to call it, but it's also the rules of thirds. How we're gonna adjust this is we're gonna type in three and type in three. Now, look at this. It's the exact thing that you see on your camera. Now we can adjust our eye line on our punch-in to make it to where it's less jarring and it'll match up to the other one. What we wanna do is just line this out. You know, when you're exporting, you can just disable this video track very simply like this, or you can come in here and go right click and you can click on enable clip or you can press D and D will enable and disable the grid that we have selected. The next thing that I want to show you guys is how we can save our effects for everything that you do in your future timelines, as long as it's working within the database. And that's what we call power bins, okay? Now, if we create a new database, obviously everything in this power bin will not work on a new database, so you would have to bring it into the new database. But within the same database, everything that you save within this power bin can be used for future timelines. All we have to do is just drag and drop it right into our power bins. So now, if I come in here and go new project, and let's just name it test, 
okay, and we go into our power bins, guess what? The adjustment clip is right there. Of course, we don't have any video footage underneath, but we do see the grid, right? So if we did create a new database, for example, let's go add project library and go test. Now, when you click on power bins, nothing is gonna show up. But if we come back in here to our local database where everything is saved, we come into an unentitled project and we click on power bin, it's gonna be right there. Other thing that we can use adjustment clips for is for transitions. This is where it gets a little bit exciting and I wanna show you guys how to do a whip pan transition in Fusion. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go ahead and right click on this and we're gonna go open a Fusion page. You can also click on your uh, Fusion page right here and it'll just bring it in as long as the adjustment clip is selected. Everything is node based inside DaVinci Resolve and After Effects and Premiere is all layer based. What we're gonna do to make this whip transition, very simple, we're gonna go ahead and click on our transform, okay? Now, within this transform, you're gonna see your center, everything like that, same what you see in your edit page, right? Your zoom and your position. The only difference on this is that we're not gonna be messing with this. But we're gonna go ahead and go to our center right click on it by holding down your control or if you have a right click button on your mouse, which I don't because I'm working on the MacBook Pro. And we're gonna click on modify with and we're gonna go down to vector result or vector modifier. We're gonna come over here to our modifiers and on here, you're gonna see your distance, your angle, and we'll get into that here in a few minutes. Now with our distance, we're gonna right click on our distance and we're gonna click on Modify with Anim Curves. Anim, Anim Curves. Man, that is, that's a tongue twister. Whew. Okay, so what Anim Curves does is it basically kind of creates the keyframes and all the guesswork for you so you don't have to go in there and manually do everything. And it's just absolutely incredible what it does. Okay, so for our curve, I like to use easing and our in and out points, we're gonna set it down to Expo and Expo, okay? Now, with this, I mean, you guys can play around with it to figure out what is best for you guys. This is just what works best for me when I'm creating the whip pan transition. Now, what we're gonna do now is go back into your tools. We're gonna come in here to Edges and we're gonna click on Wrap. Now, when I'm doing this, it's just gonna wrap it right? Perfect. The only thing is, is that it looks kind of boring still, right? It's not what the human eye would see. We need to add motion blur. And what motion blur is, you know, if you put your hand in front of your face and you start moving it back and forth, guess what you're going to see? You're going to see motion blur, right? It's never going to be just a uh, stick you know you're not going to just see your hand like this there's always going to be motion blur that's just natural it's what your eyes see okay underneath quality we can increase it down to 10 but we can also manually type it in now here's the thing about the quality of your motion blur the higher the quality the more gpu power it takes if you can get your transition to actually render then you can actually put it at a higher quality than what it's maxed at, okay? So let's just do it at 10, or we can come up here and do 15. Again, the higher the quality, the more GPU power it takes. My computer does not like this, so we're gonna bring it down to 10, okay? Now is we're gonna see a very smooth transition, right? So it's going from one to another. Now. Here's one thing about the whip pans is that you can go as wild and crazy as you guys want and underneath your scaling, you know, the higher your scaling, the more it will do kind of crazy whip pan effects. So play around with it and find what works best for you on here. I'm going to go back into zero and obviously this is just a whip pan, right? We can come back in here to edit though and say that we want to save this for our future videos. We can come in here and instead of dragging it, let's go to file and we'll say whip right. Of course, I already have a whip right. 
and then you're just gonna drag and drop it right here, okay? I can go back in here and say, I want the whip right, boom. And keep it right here in the center, and now look what it's doing. It does a whip right. You can also make it to do whip ups, whip downs, and whip lefts. And the way that we do that is we're gonna jump back into our fusion tab, and we're gonna go into our modifier, we're gonna go into our distance, we're gonna put this to, let's reset this to one, and this runs at right angles, okay? So it has like an 80, a 90, even 270, so it's like, what if I do a 270? What's gonna happen is that it's gonna go down, right? So let's do a 180. When I do 180, guess what it does? It goes left, okay? And you can create as many whips as you want. You can have all four of them, you know, whip right, whip, whip left, whip up, whip down, and that way you can just drag and drop it across your timelines no matter where you have it. All right, here's a great time to take a little break and tell you guys, if you guys are learning DaVinci Resolve, this is the channel for you. Every Friday we do post a new video tutorial and we're here as a community growing and learning together. So with that being said, if you want to learn DaVinci Resolve, click that subscribe button. If you guys want to learn filmmaking in general, we'll be posting that on Tuesdays. Just click that subscribe button, click that bell notification icon, and you will be notified on our future videos, okay? All right, let's get back into it. Now let's talk about how we can use the color grading feature for adjustment clips, and this is where that one guy comment on there say, why don't we use it? Well, the reason why I don't use the adjustment clip when it comes to color grading is, well, let me just say this. I didn't even think about using it for color grading. And so my mind is blown what you can do with this thing. So what we can do here is that we can click on our adjustment clip and I say this is about four minutes in length. So we'll press command D and we're gonna come in here to, let's just go to four minutes. Now it should be near the end. Yes, it's just a little bit over. We can click on our color grade and we can go in here and just, let's just do a slight coolness, I would say. And we'll pull this off by adjusting it just a hair. Okay, so this is a perfect. And as you guys can see right here, I'm working on the adjustment clip, which means everything underneath it is what? Affected by what's on this adjustment clip. Now that we have this grade, we can come in here and go file and go, I love it. Now what we can do is go into our power bin again, right? And we could click on this and drag it right in here. So now every time I have a new timeline and I like that grade and I want to reuse it, I just have to go boom. Now this doesn't work with correcting your footage because obviously correcting your footage can vary on each clip basis. So you've got to be able to shot match your clips before you do your final grade. But right when you have everything set, this is a great method to use to speed up your editing workflow. Lastly, I wanna talk about aspect ratios, okay? Let's just say that we are uh, working on a 1920 by 1080 timeline and your uh, director comes up to you after you get done editing this long feature, like an hour long feature or an hour long documentary film and says, I don't like this aspect ratio of 16 by nine, which is standard on television, right? 16 by nine aspect ratio. I want to see it more on a 239 to one. Well, what's 239 to one? Well, that's your letterboxing, right? And a lot of times 239 to one is your widescreens that you'll see in a lot of action films. I mean, aspect ratios can depict emotions and we'll get into that in a different video. For now, I'm just gonna show you guys how you guys can quickly adjust your aspect ratios and speed up your workflow using the adjustment clip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click on your adjustment clip, drag it on here, boom. And okay, again, what did the director say? He wanted a 239 aspect ratio. So we can go in here and do 2K 2048 by 58 DCI scope 239 aspect ratio. 
So what we can do here is let's just say that we like this, but now we have black space between on the sides, left and right. And we would have to go in here clip by clip and readjust this aspect ratio to make it work. That'd be annoying, especially if you have 150 clips or if you have maybe even a thousand clips on your timeline and you have to go through this individually one by one. Yeah, obviously you could press command C and then go in here and go option V and click on your video attributes and press apply. So now it's the same, but again, you would have to go clip by clip. Let's save some time here. And I already copied this. Let's just go on here and go option V. Oh, well now I actually cut down my duration of my adjustment clip, but we could come in here and go command D and go in here to our four minute length. And now everything is going to be two, three, nine to one right there. You guys have it ways to save time editing using the adjustment clip. I really appreciate that guy putting that comment in and you know, it's just mind blowing what you guys can do with the adjustment clip. And you remember the adjustment clip is based on your timeline resolution, not your clip resolution. If you guys like this content, please press that like button, click that subscribe button and smash that notification icon, bell button, whatever it is to, you know, be notified on future videos. Before we go guys, uh, I forgot to bring in on our community tab and it looks like we have 27% that wants another DaVinci Resolve giveaway, 53% wants the Aperture 60X, 13% excuse me, wants a DJI wireless mic, 7% wants a monitor. So this is what we're going to end up doing guys because I... I feel like Christmas time, you know, Christmas time is time of giving. I'm actually going to do two. Okay. We're going to do two giveaways in December instead of one. We're going to give away the DaVinci Resolve studio and we're going to give away the Aperture 60 X. Okay. So we're going to have two different winners for our giveaway coming up in December. That is December 1st running till December 27th. And we're going to be announcing the winner December 27th. So stay tuned for that. And I'm just excited about our future together, guys. We're learning. We're growing together. This is amazing. We're building this family together. And that's what it's all about, right? Until next time, practice and create.